Hello, hello everyone. My name is Pei Wen. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, this is my first English talk, so if you don't understand my uh, poor English, please feel free to ask me any question. Uh, I'm a front end developer in the uh, past seven years. I have I had a lot of companies around the world who help them to build uh, the marketing website and the web apps because I used to work in a design agency. So I have a lot of opportunity, opportunity to work with uh, different uh, CMS. I probably work uh, with more than 10 different CMS like uh, HubSpot, uh, WordPress, uh, Symfony CMS, Craft. And uh, to be honest, I don't like all of them <laughs> because I, I always think uh, that there is one way to improve uh, the, the current uh, situation of the CMS, and uh, unless I met uh, Gatsby last year, I uh, believe this is the future of the, the, the of the uh, building the, the modern website. And uh, uh, to begin with my speech tonight, I'd like to start with uh, the static site generator. Uh, have you ever used any static site generator? Jekyll. Yeah, Jekyll. Uh, uh, I'm sure you must have heard of uh, GitHub Pages because GitHub Pages is powered by a static site generator called uh, Jekyll. And uh, uh, this is Jekyll. So let's look at the official side of Jekyll. It says transform your plain text into static website and uh, blogs. And uh, uh, if you uh, uh, have you ever seen uh, any uh, GitHub Pages project? Uh, like, uh, I, I, uh, let me see. I, oh, sorry. I created this uh, diagram to demonstrate how a uh, static site generator works. It converts some uh, static files to a website. Uh, normally, it's uh, some markdown files, and uh, the Jekyll will uh, work with some partials like a header. It will combine the, the, mark, the markdown to, uh, it will comply the markdown to some HTML files with uh, some headers, footer, containers, the CSS, and the images. You provide those partials. Uh, which is a component in React. It, uh, so it helps you to convert those static files to, the, uh, to a website. And it uh, uh, has many benefits to the, it, it. If you want to build a, if you build a website in this way, you don't need a database, so it's uh, quite secure. And uh, uh, you don't need some uh, server side dependencies, for, uh, for example, you can just put your entire website to uh, Amazon S3. So uh, it's quite reliable. And uh, the performance is extremely fast. And you can also use the version control to manage the, the different versions of your website. <coughs> I think uh, after, uh, I think you have released the, the Jekyll uh, six or eight years ago. And uh, at that time, every developer want to convert their uh, blogs to a static site. And I, uh, if you uh, happen to have a big view of this, uh, how it works, I, I, let's see the Bootstrap official site, because this is probably the most important website built with Jekyll. Uh, uh, maybe it's okay, sir. This site is, is a static site, uh, it's generated by a Jerko. And uh, everything you see in this website is actually in this uh, folder, the boost, the boost web repository site uh, folder. <coughs> uh, for a Static side generator. Let's look at this. Uh, so the developers of Bootstrap they provide some layouts 
Uh, yeah. This. Yes, okay. they, they provide some layout of like the like the document. So this is a bit slow. I didn't expect it. This may be. It is a template engine called a liquid. So you can see this is partials. Uh, the, this is a layout of the Booster official website, and uh, you can reuse some uh, code snips in this format. This is header, the nav bar, the those. Uh, this is a layout of the and. Uh, I believe this is the content of the page. So the well, yeah. Is that Jekyll? Yes, it is Jekyll. This is a liquid uh, template engine. Jekyll uses liquid. Uh, there are many different other uh, template engines like uh, Twig, uh, Handlebar, uh, <coughs> and when the uh, Back to the let's say the content folder. It this is a document. You can see volume four point three, and you can see lots of uh, the booster like uh, this buttons. Let's look at the. So, uh, or maybe this. You can see this. This page is actually written in Markdown, and the Joker convert the the content. It inject those page, this Markdown file, to the uh, content. This to, to the content field we see previously, and the generator this page. So this is a static site generator. It, uh, it uh, let's see some. So this is uh, some. Uh, let's see some uh, the role. You can see this uh, example field. It convert this code snippet to something like this. First, it is the real uh, markup in the HTML and the highlighted code snippet. So this this is a, a, a component written in, in Joko. So we can, if you go back to the side folder and the layout and partials yeah Yes, so cool, sorry. This is uh, the how it works in liquid. You can see uh, it do some this 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 code will add the the highlight to and uh, let me see. So mm. 
So, okay. Uh, that's uh, the introduction of uh, Jerko. And the next I would like to talk about is side leaf. Side leaf is a tool to help uh, users to work with Jerko better because because uh, because everything in Java is written in code. This is not suitable for everyone. Uh, especially for the uh, marketing staff in the company, the editors. So this company, they create a tool to virtualize uh, the, the code into an editor, uh, something like this. I can't uh, log into my uh, site with account, uh, so I find a screenshot online. So this is a markdown, it's, this is some uh, uh, types, the draft are hidden, visible, or tags, or you can add, a, actually you can add some customers to, to this markdown file. This company created this to, to help uh, the non-developers working with Jekyll well. Uh, okay, uh, uh, any questions about this? Because I, I try, I'm trying to introduce some background of uh, the, the developing of uh, uh, CMS. Yeah. So why do we need a static website? Because it's, uh, you, yeah, yeah. Like you don't need a database. <laughs> you, you, everything is uh, faster. You, you, you save lots of uh, time. <laughs> it's flat. This is just for my reasons. I mean, you can uh, find much more reasons online, read some uh, 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 posts. Uh, so uh, after this, uh, I would like to introduce the, the new uh, term, headless CMS, or the API-based CMS. Normally, CMS, we see a uh, 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 content builder, uh, admin page, uh, you log into, you add your content, and uh, you also need to write the, the, the layout, uh, the, the header footer, the user path for a CMS. But this is a new way to do uh, CMS. This, this is API-based. So, uh, Let's see the content for which is the most famous uh, content for CMS. This is the the features page. So you can see it create it. It has a, a beautiful content builder. It helps you to uh, manage your content, and uh, it also supports multi language and it uh, allows you to manage the the permissions and uh, some some. Uh, different types of, so you can customize the CMS for you or for yourself or for your clients and uh, uh, it uh, doesn't provide any pages, it just return you an API. You created this, you created this, this sort of stuff and uh, it returns you an API, it gives you an API so you can access this API in any any anything, so you can not only use this content for a CMS for a website. You can use it for a uh, iOS application. You can use it for a Android application, or use it for a Apple Watch or the smart TV. You can use it for anything. This is a new uh, way of doing CMS. Uh, the content for is the most uh, famous one and the most expensive one. It costs uh, at least. Uh, uh, Four or five hundred dollars a month, or eight dollars, eight hundred dollars a month. Uh, there is a there is a free one, open source one, but it's uh, the feature is limited. So you can see, you can come build some some collections, build some some pages, and it to just retain you adjacent. So you can use it in anything. And uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, okay. It's very good for multi-language website. 
because it's born for, for the multilingual lingual website. And uh, uh, besides that, you can also convert some regular CMS to a headless CMS. Like uh, the WordPress has released uh, a RESTful API for their content last year. And uh, uh, I, I, I find there's three uh, articles for the modern regular CMS. The first one is for WordPress, the second one is for uh, Graph, and the third one is for Drupal. So uh, if you are interested, you can have a look at this. Uh, now finally, we are going to introduce Gatsby. <laughs> so Gatsby is a, a fun, it's very together the best part of React and WebPack, React Router, GraphQL, and other front end tools in one very enjoyable developer experience. <coughs> So uh, uh, let's let's take a look at uh, Gatsby. It is very new, but it's uh, already adapted by many large companies. If you take a look at the showcases, you can see the, the official website of React is using Gatsby. Uh, some like Airbnb, uh, Netty, or uh, uh, Figma. Some large companies already uh, use Gatsby, and uh, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce the, the two main, uh, two important uh, uh, features of Gatsby. The first one is uh, Gatsby uses React. So uh, using is actually using React is actually uh, you, uh, com using the, the template engine versus JSX. Uh, liquid use uh, so liquid is used by. Uh, by Jericho. Uh, so you can see the syntax is actually is okay. Some some people uh, don't like JSX, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I don't understand <laughs> because I'm a, 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 a big fan of JSX and uh, uh, and uh, the JSX can do one thing that any template engine cannot do is it can dynamically change the layout based on sc screen size. So this is just one example. So if you are, uh, for example, if you are building a website and it has a responsive header, on the small screen, it needs to be a, uh, I'll show you an example. Um, I built this website many years ago, probably two years ago. And this is uh, the header. So on the small screen size, it converts the, the navigation to this mobile one. And on the large screen, oh, there's a bug. It's, it's, uh, no. it's uh, like uh, this. But actually, they are uh, same layout. I just use some CSS to do the trick to make it looks different, and uh, that's, to be honest, it's a really pain. Uh, but with, uh, sorry, with, with JSX, we can add an event listener to the page. We can keep uh, listening the uh, window resize event and uh, modify the uh, variable, so we can choose, on small size, we use uh, the mobile header, and on the big screen, we use desktop header. This is very, very easy. It's a see lots of the uh, developing time and make it really enjoyable. Uh, and uh, the the next uh, uh, important thing that the reactor brings to Gatsby is every website is a single page application. Let's look at the the official side of the. Uh, of the reactor. This is a Gatsby site. So when you click 
uh, an internal link you say is extremely fast because let's see the this one because you can see the page doesn't refresh when you click a link. This is re-rendered. It's no refresh. And uh, if you look at the network, you can see. Oh, sorry. I should have cleaned it. That one. And uh, when my mouse hover over on this link, there is a new uh, Ajax call. So you can see the. Actually, it's requiring when my mouse hover over on this thing, it's only requiring the content of this new page, and it's preloaded. I didn't click that button. I just hover my mouse on that link and pre-request the content. Of it. So when I click down, it is super fast to reload this area. Uh, how? Because when you access this page is this page is actually turned into a single web page, a single web app, a single web, single page web application. It's not a uh, traditional web pages. So, uh, but if you uh, copy this link URL, copy this URL, and open a new tab, and uh, look at the page source, you can see the content as well. So this is for the SEO. So Google, the, the search engine, can find the content of this page. But uh, when you open this page, it uh, will immediately turn to a web page application. So that's, that's a trick, I guess. Really. That's why it makes it so fast. And uh, if you do the new performance test, let's do a performance test for, the, for this site. Just uh, wait for a few seconds. The performance. You actually don't even to do lots of uh, op op uh, work to optimize the performance. It's naturally have a high performance. So guess we, the Gatsby team already did lots of work to improve the performance by, uh, by default. So, uh, and uh, the next thing is uh, GraphQL. Uh, GraphQL makes Gatsby can uh, get source from anywhere. Uh, when we talk about Jericho, Jericho can only confirm the source from Markdown files, but, it, uh, but thanks for the GraphQL, I guess we can grab source from anything. Uh, can it can grab source from uh, ISS feed, uh, from uh, some uh, RESTful APIs, uh, can grab source from the old WordPress website, the craft uh, CMS, it can grab from anything. Uh, I'm going to just give you a, a example of uh, GraphQL, but uh, I think I probably forgot to install the dependencies, so uh, just, just <laughs> sorry. Uh, have you ever heard of GraphQL before? So, uh, this is this tool is uh, uh, is made by Facebook uh, because <coughs> uh, I would not show you. Listen. Uh, 
Uh, normally, we uh, when we work with backend, we uh, we will uh, send an Ajax call and we get this JSON uh, return. Uh, the if say if you want a, a new field, so we normally need to ask the backend staff, uh, "Hey, can you add a new field to this API?" But uh, GraphQL, you can uh, ask. Uh, you can just send a. Uh, a keyword to let the server know which field I need. Uh, I think we make it bigger. Yeah, so. Mm. So, I show you some. Yeah, can you see this? Uh, oh, I make it bigger. This is my request. So if I say I want to uh, query the hero, the hero name, the hero height, the event, it just return. If I just query the name, it return the name. If I return, uh, query the height, it will return the name and the height. So this is what came up. It's uh, works in a new way with APIs. It's a new way to work with APIs. A few seconds. So, okay. Let's see. This is the playground of uh, GraphQL. I'm going to show you how it, what it can. Uh, I have some uh, Markdown files, uh, MDX files already. So clean this. So I want to query all the Markdown files. So I can give it a try. So if it return all the Markdown files I have. But uh, by default, it will return the ID. But I want the the front matter. I want the title, and I can click try. So it will return the title. And uh, if I say I want to query the body of this markdown, it will return the the title, the body, and the ID. So basically, if I want uh, anything, I just Add to this uh, part, and it will return the. the so it's very good for writing lists. Yeah. Details, yes. Lists yeah. Lists yeah. Because, yeah. Because you, you, yeah. Because if you work with uh, RESTful APIs, you are limited by the backend developer. But if you use a gra uh, the the GraphQL, the backend developer will only do some schemes. The scheme is the structure of this data. We just the backend stuff. We only handle this uh, structure, and uh, you will use 
this to query the data you want. So it's a very helpful tool. This is made by uh, Facebook. And, uh, uh, so. Can we add something to the Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so originally we are working with REST. Yes. If we want to like build an East, we will have like a backend yeah. back developer will give us an API which contains uh, yeah. maybe returns the yeah. players, yeah. The, the, like what we are going to show on the East, right? And then the developer will, back end developer will give us another API to show the details, yes. like the full, all yeah. the fields of that specific entity. So it's not easy to like scale. So what if we want to add, we want to show a lot of fields in the East, then we need to ask for the developer, yes. the backend developer, to yes. add that field for us. Yes. So with GraphQL API, actually the backend developer can like implement all the fields. We need to create a tag. We need to create a tag. This is uh, called uh, all mark index. And it, uh, the, there is a, the MDX, I can call it a specific uh, MDX file, or uh, I can call it all the MDX field. They create a type called MDX, so it has the M uh, MDX and all MDX, and they create, uh, create the types for this field. If this field are not existing in the scheme, you cannot query this data, so the backend is really need to do lots of stuff. Yeah, to but, like, they can Add everything there and we query Yes, yes. So it's not limited by one page. You can uh, use GraphQL to query the content from this page and maybe that page or maybe uh, the different pages. It's, it's like uh, requesting content on demand. Yes. And uh, you always get everything back. Yes, yeah, so you can also add some filters to your, uh, like, uh, you can word count, maybe this is not there. Let me say the formatter, the title, maybe it's all. Uh, <coughs> then you are calling all the. Just, Uh, no, sorry. Maybe has no. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Maybe greater than two. Greater than one. Uh, I can add a filter. So, so all the markdown file with front has this uh, header, uh, net order field value, and uh, it's greater than one. So I can filter this one. It's, you can call it on demand. You can add a uh, mass complex, and you can also add a sort. You can sort. You can sort with uh, this thing, this field. Yes. This uh, graph here. And uh, let's next. So Gatsby will use GraphQL to query source from anywhere. It will automatically create the skin. If you will, will work with GraphQL in a uh, normal way, so you need uh, the, the backend the developer need create schemes. The skin, uh, 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 I mean, the uh, skin. And uh, the good part of Gatsby is it can create the skin automatically. So you can use directly Gatsby. 
get, uh, get a source from anywhere. So it, uh, there are some uh, plugins to make it work with uh, WordPress. So for example, your client have a, a very old WordPress site and it has uh, lots of content and they are not willing to uh, convert, the word, move the content from WordPress to, to a new uh, CMS because that costs a lot. But you can help them to create a modern website but the, the data still come from that old WordPress. This is uh, the, the, yeah. <laughs> And uh, so it uh, generated a list of each of uh, HTML files. So each, each page is an entry, but when you access the page, it will directly turn to a uh, reactive web, web app. So it's a very powerful way to build a modern website. Uh, okay, so I think we can let's start. Let's get our hand dirty. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for the for the WordPress to Gatsby. Yes. Do you have to go through GraphQL or send a plugin for WordPress? Oh, uh, yeah, there is a plugin. I I can show you. Uh. Oh, sorry. Sourcing from. WordPress. There is actually an article to uh, to teach you how to combine Gatsby with WordPress. You can use the the source from WordPress. You can use source from uh, like a uh, craft. Uh, no, I search the plugin. You can use source from uh, craft CMS or maybe. Medium, yes. You can get this from Medium or RSS field. Yes, from anything. Yes, this is a powerful uh, gas field. So, uh, next we are going to create a gas field site. If you, uh, sorry, sorry, more. <laughs> How about pagination on the, the pagination? Yes, the pagination you are using the uh, oh, sorry. You are going to create a pagination with GraphQL. Let me show you. Uh, you can query all the markdowns, and uh, you uh, can sort of. First, you probably need to sort of them. Maybe sort of by the the. You see, focus on let's uh, sort them by the the title and the order. You can you this order, so you can get all this stuff, and uh, you can set a limited, mm -hmm. so you can query the first the ten and the second the ten. Yeah, you use the this this tool to help you to cre uh, create the queries for pagination's. When you write something, you may have to yeah. do it by myself. Rather than we can create a pagination later. <laughs> uh, after, yeah, we, yeah. So if you want to uh, build your own Gatsby, your first Gatsby site, you can uh, firstly install the, the Gatsby CLI tool, command line tool, and uh, start a new Okay. Can, can you say yeah, yeah. Like, uh, WeChat? Yes. Uh, okay. I think it's for the uh, week ago. 
don't don't forget to replace this project name with your own name. It's a command line to the the, the test this um,
Does anyone already install the the, the cache PC or IT? We're going to use this default stuff. I guess the official uh, report from uh, 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 this is the official report to demonstrate the the, the, the minimum example of the uh, cache PC. Oh, yes. <laughs> Not seem better, maybe the light one better. Use a light one, or this one's better. Okay.
Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, this is uh, the default starter from Gatsby. And this is, uh, let's see, I create a Gatsby project named uh, Cohack. And this is, uh, on the right side is the, the file structure. It has, uh, the, those four files are actually the configuration files for Gatsby. It, <coughs> the first one, the broader one is for, uh, for the, for the for your uh, web page, uh, when the web, first when the web page is loaded into the browser, so you can add some command in this Gatsby browser form. Like uh, you can you can get the local uh, storage, the value from local storage. And uh, this is the main file. This is a Gatsby config file. It uh, it saves all your settings for Gatsby. Uh, we will look at this later. This is Gatsby node. This is uh, th this node file is for actually for the for the Gatsby life cycle. It help you can uh, help Gatsby to create the node, which is the, the GraphQL sources for for your content. And this is SSR. If you are you need some server side running. Uh, the stuff and you can add it to this file. And uh, the, there is a SRC folder and it contains some uh, components, uh, images, the static image and the pages. This pages is, this pages folder is actually the router for Gatsby. For ex example, this, uh, let me start this. Gatsby 
Que valeu. When I started the uh, Gatsby, firing the Gatsby development command, it's not in the Gatsby uh, life cycle. First, it, it will read the Gatsby config files, to read all the configurations, and it will generate the uh, loading the plugins. You can see it's uh, loading plugins and uh, initialize the cache and uh, get the file, or something like that. Finally, this uh, this is the, the example side. Um, so this is a React app. Yes, this is a React app. So you don't have to run React. With, with no, no, it's already integrated. Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, this is uh, the oh maybe the okay. <coughs> in the uh, pages folder all those three files it will uh, <coughs> uh, this is the this is the site because case we use the file structure as its uh, URL stru uh, structure so uh, the index the This is an index page. So if I change it, yeah. it's automatically how to reload the content of the index page. And uh, if I, I want to add a new page, and uh, maybe, uh, 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 for example, if I want to add a blog, I, I want it has a, a something like this. Blog, blog uh, get started. I can create a a new folder under the pages folder and get JS file. I copy everything from this. Maybe I'll change the and uh, yes. This is, this is uh, I just created a get started page and uh, under the root uh, blog get started so the, the, the URL is, is file structure based on the file structure so if you want to create a, a new uh, directory you just create some new folder and add some files to it what was the command to start the server? So, uh, get be developed. In the front of the same solution is that when you use Kilant to install, mm -hmm. uh, get speed is in the web. So, it looks like you can't use the sign of get speed to be able to create a new project. Yeah, the text view, the CLI tool is helpful to create a new project. Uh, so you, you create a project from scratch. You uh, manually add the Gatsby dependencies. In the terminal? Yeah. You do Gatsby view? Yes. Gatsby is great, right, it's not going to be. So it looks like I had it about the Gatsby framework. Mm -hmm. So I have to create a new project. So if you want to do something like that, we have the same thing. We both have the system. 
Next time I'm going to uh, show you uh, the Gatsby works with MDX. MDX is uh, 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 a Markdown file, but you can use a JS uh, React component inside uh, a Markdown. First, um, If you already installed the, the Gatsby default starter, please try the, this command to install the MDX dependencies. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot to uh, mention something. In the, uh, if you look at the, the layout of this part, you can see they use uh, they use static queries. So they use the query the the static the the site configures in. Oops, oops. In this uh, this configuration file, you can uh, you, this file is for uh, all your site uh, 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 all your site uh, site metadata like the title, the description for your website. And this is uh, for SEO, and uh, the plugins you are going to use in this uh, web uh, website, and uh, in the layout. Uh, you can use this set the query to get the that value and then we use the in this uh, website. And <coughs> uh, I guess we use this uh, comment. This is a reductive uh, comment. So you can just add it. This plugin will help you to convert this attribute to the uh, to the to the HTML file. <coughs> like uh, for the, uh, I'll just show you. Like if you are using this SEO uh, component inside the index.js file. But this this attribute is not added to this uh, this markup. It's actually added to the layout to the root of the HTML. So this plugin is used to, to do this kind of stuff. Um, This is a page in the page for the index field. So it will use the layout from the component. The component has a layout. Yeah. Yeah. The, the layout the layout has this <laughs> and the layout of this. So this is the the content of this index page. And this as you will convert a new uh, output this type of field to the layout, not to this page. Uh, to the header, header. Yeah. Mm. So I, I'm going to spend a few minutes to set up the MDX, so just <laughs> bear with me for a second. I have a muscle memory. <laughs> no, uh, there's some. Uh, uh, I, I configured the old uh, shortcut by myself, and I spent lots of time, to, uh, many years, to to improve this. So I, I have a memory to do that, muscle memory to do that. <laughs> 
I'm going to copy. I'm going to copy some uh, snips. Markdown file. I just added this configuration, so my software is uh, of works with MDX. I just renamed my index JS to index so MDX. So I can write. Uh, I'm writing this uh, Markdown. So this uh, the index page, and uh, I can import. A component to this markdown for the layout. Um, maybe components layout. Yes. It's easy to, to, to use. It's it's easy. You just focus on the content. You don't worry about the the it, yeah. But uh, because most of the the uh, blog system we use Markdown. It's uh, uh, all uh, the note application. We, we, we. Yeah, uh, you can see. I uh, I just imported the layout component from previous and export before. This layout component, so it automatically read the content to this layout. So if I want to add a, a chart or a third party plug, uh, third party plugin from React, I can directly import it. But the export default component will become the layout for this content. You can use, you can import anything, and uh, just render here like. Uh, a normal React component. Um, because I, I remember uh, once I had a client asking me to add a co code action box inside of an article. 
And it's really difficult to do that with uh, some uh, content viewer. But with this uh, MDX, I can just import the CTA box and uh, render it somewhere I want to, to just like render a normal React component here. So it's super flexible and easy to use. Save lots of the time. A lot of images, video player. Yeah, it's automated. The uh, images, there is a, Gatsby has a the image uh, component, it will, uh, it looks like a bit, uh, no, actually I, I'm not going to introduce them. There is a uh, and uh, I, I actually recommend that you this uh, plugin to uh, to support for image. So you can in your in in the markdown you can just. Uh, uh, Use a relevant path for your images. Like if you add a image here, I can. Uh, you know. This be. But I haven't installed that part. But if you use this, you install this part, then you automatically render, uh, find this image and render it here. And uh, it will automatically add the medium, uh, the image loading start, and the blur the image, and... Uh, 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 <laughs> so does Markdown not support images? Or? No, it, it supports images, but this plugin can yeah. help you to, uh, to, uh, to add some uh, lazy loading start for the image, like the, the medium. First, they, you, you open the page and it's blurred. And then it's uh, become uh, when the four images are downloaded and replaced by the uh, four images, it's handle lots of things for you. And uh, uh, I just show you some examples of what Gatsby can do. For example, you can write uh, some override the default data configs in this format. So you can uh, I did some allies for the for my Gatsby project. This, this you can add uh, override the pack config, and uh, you can also. And here you can also add some uh, some notes field, so it can add some uh, extra field to your uh, GraphQL queries. For example, you if you group this if if you if you want to group all the files inside this log folder, you can add a field. You can add a field to uh, make it. Uh, for example, uh, any field uh, said this is a blog. So when you do with a graph field, you can just directly query all the uh, blog field, blog field. So this make everything easy. And uh, it uh, it can also, if you use the create pages uh, hook, you can uh, dynamically dynamically create page. Not uh, Create page from the 
the uh, Makra file, the selected file, you can create the file from uh, APIs, from a JSON file. You can do anything with Gatsby. This is super flexible. Yes, you can create pages, automatically create pages. You just set up the rules. For example, I set up with the iPad, the I didn't use this. Uh, I I didn't use this structure for uh, in this site. Uh, I didn't use the structure of uh, these pages. I create my own rules uh, for generating this kind of challenge uh, list. I can show you this project. I haven't finished it, but uh, I put this uh, this uh, documentation site generator with Gatsby, and it supports multiple variants. And uh, like uh, this is not finished. <laughs> and uh, if you see the file structure. You can see all these uh, table of contents are generated by the file structure of these this, uh, files. And uh, I use this uh, create pages to build my own rule to generate, uh, generate the, the table of contents. This project is not finished. So uh, I think uh, I'm going to share this, uh, all this stuff with Gatsby, and if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me. Uh, so if you had a client that came to you today and said, yeah. I want you to build me a site with the CMS, you just send that to Yes. Yeah. No, no WordPress. No WordPress. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free. I, I will share my uh, projects later on GitHub, so you can uh, have a look. Thank <laughs> you.